Hey guys, welcome to another TFL Today show. And we're coming to you live from Boulder from our headquarters. That's right, we are in our garage slash studios. We're a little bit behind schedule today, we apologize, but My fault. this video, when it finishes it in about 30 minutes, um, it'll become a video you can review online anytime. Yeah, and remember, even after it becomes a regular video, please comment so we can actually respond to them. We will be reading comments. Yep, and we have Tommy off screen. He's gonna be driving some of the pictures for the show and um, also asking us questions or comments that you have right now during the show. And today we're doing top five best used trucks for under $5,000, but even there is a twist to it. Yep. This is recommendation for a first vehicle for somebody. That's right. This is the best first truck. So think about it as, you know, your very first jump into an actual truck that's inexpensive. We have a nice little list for you. Yep, and it's also for somebody who just got their driver's license. You know, maybe you're 16 years old and um, you, you know what, you want the first vehicle and why should you get a pickup truck? One thing about pickup trucks, which a lot of people out there who have never driven one don't quite understand, is that they are, by comparison to a car, very easy to work on. They are rather logically set up. They have, well, in most cases, they have an engine in the front, they have a drive shaft, and then they have a rear end powering the rear wheels, with the exception of the Honda. We won't go into the other ones. But the point is, is that they usually have a lot of parts available, especially these really old, cheaper trucks. You can go to a wrecking yard or order online lots of parts that are not that expensive. Yep, and also a first truck or a first vehicle for anybody, you know, you can learn your mechanics, right? You can fix it. You go under the hood. It has a frame, and um, you can do a, a lot of different things with it. You can also move. Yep. Let's say you're going off to college. You can put a lot of your stuff in the back of the truck. You will be popular amongst your friends when you have a pickup truck. Yes, so all these things are good. And the used truck, first of all, it's inexpensive to buy. Yep. You don't pay a lot of taxes because it's inexpensive. That's right. Um, and you can modify it. Some of these older ones actually get pretty damn good gas mileage too. And there are a bunch of uh, smaller pickup trucks that are not on this list, like the like from Mitsubishi Mighty Max and whatnot. And those are other trucks definitely to consider. But the ones we have on this list definitely are worth a quick look. And we're going to start off with number five with the Chevy S10. Yep. And by the end of the show, we're going to give away a t-shirt for our Patreon supporters. Yep. But a Chevy S10, uh, and it's had several generations of that. And for under $5,000, you can find a lot of different models, including a ZR2. That's right. There's actually two different generations for the Chevy S10, the square body and the rounded body. They did have a similar platform underneath, but there were some modifications. And one of the things that's really cool about the ZR2 version is it is a much more off-road ready vehicle. And you have all of this stuff standard, including a wider stance, beefed up suspension, beefed up powertrain that can help off-road. And all of that stuff came standard with it. Just like the modern day ZR2 that has a lot of extra stuff to make it better off-road. So I highly recommend those, especially because they are a lot wider in terms of stance than the regular pickup trucks, which frankly, the both generations of the S10 are uh, really narrow. Yeah, and the 2017 ZR2 is just out. So the ZR2 name is very popular right now. So it might be a little bit difficult to find a used ZR2. They might be going up in value just a little bit, but the ZR2 was wider. Like you said, it was properly set up for off-roading. Including armor underneath. Oh, by the way, they also had a ZR2 Blazer. Same vehicle, but it's a, the, the small Blazer body on top of that platform. And I was just on Craigslist the other day, and I found several of those vehicles, both pickups and Blazers, that were available for under $5,000. But I have to uh, raise a warning. And this goes true for any used vehicle that you buy, because you have to be very careful. First of all, you have to check history. Sure. You have to check for common you know, repair items that may or may not have been done. That's right. And the 4.3 liter V6 in the Chevy S10 um, had a common problem, an oil pan leak, which was difficult to repair. So watch out for those things. Yeah, absolutely. And also keep in mind that any vehicle that actually comes from the factory that's built for off-road, well, some people will, will take them off-road, which means it may have lived a hard life. So definitely look at the documentation for how it's been taken care of. I mean, it's worth your while. In many cases, you won't get it, and you'll just have to see whether or not you're lucky. And that actually goes for number four, because it's an older vehicle, 
but in many ways it's very popular underneath and here's why it is the Jeep Comanche which is the two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive version basically is like the old Jeep Cherokee underneath it yep. is the same platform and they came with different bed lengths there was an eight-foot bed that was available there were a couple different four-wheel drive systems and there were a couple different engines including the straight six and a four-cylinder yeah and actually the four liter was also available that's the straight uh, six yeah 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 and that's a good engine to get um and um it's basically it's based on the xj cherokee mm -hmm. and the monarch or code name is mj right for this particular comanche so and actually i don't see a lot of them on the road so it's kind of a unique vehicle it, it's somewhat unique the thing is is that there was only one cab configuration there were no extra cab versions of it actually there was a rumor that they were working on developing one but when AMC became part of the Chrysler division, they got rid of that vehicle altogether because of the Dakota. But in terms of this vehicle, you had really good approach angles, you had a pretty decent breakover angle, they were relatively light, and you could get an eight foot bed. And in terms of payload, in some cases up to 2,000 pounds. This was a really capable little truck. And even with the four cylinder engine, you could get the five speed manual transmission, there was also a four-speed on the very first year that it came out. I only know this because I actually owned one, so I actually have a little bit of history with them. And you could also get the automatic, which we never would recommend, but it works. Yeah. And the thing is, is that if you get the five-speed with the four-cylinder engine, you can actually get half-decent mileage. And it's a little bit hard to find one that's been unmodified because yeah. a lot of guys lifted them, put giant tires, and you could do those things yourself as well. You know, update the axles, do all kinds of stuff. And I, I'm, and there's another reason why I'm really excited today. Can I, can I say? It? By all means. Well, we have this book that we co-wrote with MrTruck.com mm -hmm. and Truck Nuts TFL's Guide to Pickup Trucks. And tonight at 7 p.m. near Denver, Colorado, in Littleton, there's a book signing event at Tattered Cover, and myself and Mr. Truck are going to be there. So if you're in the Denver area tonight, Wednesday, the 14th of June, come by and see us and. Uh, I've never done a book signing before, so I'm kind of excited. Yeah, you should be excited. It'll be a lot of fun. Mr. Truck's going to be there, and that'll be a fun in itself. Putting him in a bookstore is really weird. I don't know whether or not the, the, you know, there'll be a little black hole that'll open up and swallow up the universe when he actually walks into the bookstore. I know he's very excited about this, and a lot of these topics are in this book. Yep. I kind of marked one of the pages, Top 5 Reasons to Buy a Used Truck. It's all in here. We discuss a lot of these topics. And for those of you guys who are, you know, 16, 17 years old and you're just getting used to driving or you're, and you're 15 or 14 years old and you're about to buy something, think about it this way. The good thing about buying a pickup truck is it's trial and error. And if you screw up, I don't know, certain people screw up when they buy certain large forward products that are called high boys, you mm. can still take parts out and put other parts in and eventually get it right. And that's the great thing about it. It's an education. You're able to actually learn about your vehicle, and you'll get to a point where you'll be able to hear the most minute sound and realize, ah, I need to fix that really quick. Yep. Or I'm in deep trouble, and I'm going to have to shell out a ton of money. Okay, let's move on to number three. And this one is a great one, and it's one that a lot of people don't think about, and it's the Nissan Hardbody. Yep, it's also known as a D21. Mm -hmm. That was the code name. Also known as a Nissan Pickup also known in the extended cab version as King Cab. That's correct. Now, keep in mind that the King Cab actually started with the 760 model, which predated the hard body. And in terms of off-road capability, in terms of buying one that's inexpensive, in terms of good gas mileage, it had all of those abilities. It had a three liter engine, which was actually pretty good. Yeah. And it had a four cylinder engine that was considered indestructible, right up there with the Toyota R22 engine. Really, really stout little engine, not a lot of power, but we're talking about gas mileage in the high 20s on the highway. Yeah, and it's actually currently very inexpensive. Yep. We're talking about 1994 through 1997, those kind of the years of the hard body. You can get a four-wheel drive version, which is you know a lot of fun for us in Colorado especially. Mm -hmm. And um, that legacy actually continues now because we have a long-term pickup truck, Nissan Frontier, which is also very inexpensive for a brand new truck. So uh, with a four-cylinder engine. So. You know, Nissan has that history of building kind of dependable and expensive trucks. And one final thing with, with the whole Nissan thing, uh, pre-1994 they were also called hard bodies, but back then they were either called Nissan Datsuns or Datsun Nissans, it depends on where you are in the world, yes. until they got rid of that and finally just said the name is Nissan and, and went on from there. Uh, let's go to number two because this is a really interesting one. 
Yeah, and number two is a Toyota T100. And uh, this kind of predates the whole Tundra uh, thing, and not many people remember the T100, but T100 is actually a little bit bigger than a mid-size truck, yep. and a tiny bit smaller than a standard full-size truck of the same era. Now, this is a vehicle I nearly bought about three years ago when I was starting to look at trucks, and this was right before I bought a Tacoma. Now, basically, the T100 is a Tacoma, but that's wider and has a lengthy bed by comparison, and is considered a heavier-duty truck. Now, here's the thing about the truck. First of all, there were both American versions of it and Japanese versions. In other words, it actually started in Japan, they built them there, and then they switched over in the United States, I believe, to Indiana, where they started building them. The one issue you need to keep in mind with these trucks is that they had a lot of rot issues underneath. In fact, so much so that there was a class action lawsuit against Toyota about these trucks. However, a lot of them got around that with owners who actually understood what was going on and cleaned up the undercarriage. And you can find a gem here and there with not only a V6 engine, but they had a standard supercharged engine, factory supercharged engine that made these things relatively fast. And especially up here at high elevation, really, really good for general driving and whatnot. And they were able to hold quite a bit. But the thing is, and the reason why they were not popular, they never had a V8 version, which is the whole thing why the Tundra came out afterwards. Yeah, and this was uh, like Taylor's first attempt to kind of poke at the full-size segment and learn about it. It was an extended cab version. Yep. So they never had a full, full four-door crew cab version of it. But then the Tundra came around. Right. But the T100s, you can still find, like we're saying, affordably under $5,000. That's right. You could get a one with four-wheel drive, a V6. They, had, they did have a four-cylinder version, especially with the early ones. They had a base model with a big bed that had just a standard cab. You can get a manual and automatic. You can get a rear drive or four-wheel drive. There are lots of variants. But once again, do your homework. Do the diligence. Look underneath and make sure that the frame is not rotted. Yep. And... Uh, Keep, keep your comments and questions coming after we do our number one in the bonus. We're going to, you know, engage all the questions yeah, and comments. Some questions so, here. so please keep them, keep them coming. Tell them about number one. Number one, and this is kind of a, I kind of pushed to number one myself, and this is basically an F-150, and specifically a 10th generation between 1997 and 2003. And the reason why I was kind of promoting this truck to number one of this list is because they made so many of them hundreds of thousands of units and so many different variations. You yep. know, regular cab, extended cab, crew cab, two wheel drive, four wheel drive. There were special versions, you know, um, luxurious versions of this truck. So you can find a lot of different choices for this. That's right. And this was a rugged truck, a really good truck to, you know, drive on as a daily basis from, you know, not have to really work on it very much. If you're lucky, you can get something like that for under five grand. And you did have, I believe there was a V6 version available, and there was obviously the, uh, I think it was the Triton V8 back then. Yeah, and it's a 5.4 liter, and the Triton name was around for a very long time. Right. So you can find parts for these trucks almost anywhere. You know, it's, it's stores and junkyards, remanufactured parts, the whole bit. All right, let's move on to our bonus, and our bonus is, well, right here behind us. Yes, it's our big green 1985 Chevy K10. We call it big green, it's our project truck. And we actually purchased it. Roman went out there and purchased it for $5,000. Now, bear in mind that when he purchased it, it was supposed to have a really good engine and everything was running really well, and it did okay. Uh, and ever since then, we've put thousands into it to make it even better. But the point is, is that you can get a full-sized square body truck like this for at five or perhaps even under $5,000, and you'll have yourself a really good beefy truck. Yeah, what was important to us is little rust yeah. and this truck has very little rust yeah it's clean the frame only has some surface rust there's a little bit of rust on underneath one of the fenders but overall it's pretty solid body which just is just minor important. minor dents here and there nothing too terribly bad right that was important it had the 305 v8 that's right which was fine right and it poked around town and it was good uh four speed manual with a granny yeah yeah that's a really uh, fun transmission but of course uh and you'll see these videos on tfl truck channel uh we engine swapped it chevy performance zz6 motor so we've taken it kind of to the next level oh yeah i'm um, spending a lot of money we're going to be installing throttle body fuel injection uh magna flow exhaust is already on this truck so you can check all those videos out and we're pretty excited but you can still get those under five grand that's right so guys if you have any questions now's the time to ask uh tommy do we have any
Yeah, we do actually. We've got a bunch of questions. Okay. okay. Um, what about like the mid '90s Dodge trucks? Uh, good question. Now, the mid '90s went from the square body Dakota to the rounded body Dakota. That's uh, for me. That's a much easier purchase to make because a smaller vehicle. There were a ton of Dakotas that were out there. A lot of people don't realize it, but they actually had the 318 available in the square body Dakota, first generation basically. And 318 is a great engine. They're really reliable. And they're also really easy to service by comparison to some other V6s they had back then. Uh, and with the Dakota, they actually had, between those two generations, a four cylinder, a V6, and of course the V8, and a couple different V8s at that. You could actually get the really big V8 in a small Dakota and have yourself a hot truck. Yeah, and they're very affordable. Obviously, I mean, this list could be a lot longer, right? Oh, so we could have gone to 10 easily. Yeah, we, we just wanted to focus on some of the items that we like for off-roading, especially some of the smaller trucks because of fuel efficiency and just right. kind of livability and around town maneuverability. And the bottom line is we're trying to keep it at under five grand. Now, granted, you can get a Dakota or a Ram for that matter for under five grand, but they're gonna have a ton of miles on them. So we opted for these little trucks that kind of sort of represent different ends of the spectrum. I know a guy who got a Dodge 1994 for under five grand. Yeah, well, what about Just, that one that you went off-road with? That Oh, that was a much newer truck, that 2011. Was it was around between 18 and $20,000. And we can do another list later for like $10,000 or $15,000. Sure. If you have some more money, you can get obviously a lot nicer and a lot better truck. Um, but Mr. Truck, uh, Ken Sunling just purchased a 94 Dodge and he wants to take us, you know, challenge us, uh, put his truck versus Big Green in a drag race and that's coming up very soon. Indeed it is. Let's, let's move on to another question. Um, didn't they make a rotary powered truck? Oh, they sure did. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. I had a chance to drive it too. Uh, we're talking about in the 70s uh, and, and early 80s. It was Mazda and they had, it wasn't the B210 or any of those types of things. It was a Mazda rotary truck. It actually had a unique platform, at least in the United States, for our market. And they were quick, they were a lot of fun, and the engine didn't weigh anything. But unfortunately, the one issue with the older Mazda trucks is they're tiny in the cab, and I don't think they had a rotary version available with four-wheel drive. They did have four-wheel drive trucks, but not with the rotary engine. I worked at a wrecking yard my entire life, and so we had these things come in there because people would detonate them all the time. They didn't realize that they required extra oil, and they really yeah. did. And uh, we'd get these things all the time, and it was really cool to see them come in. They're really good-looking trucks, too. They're tiny. But it almost crosses into this kind of collectible or classic because they're kind of rare. I mean, oh, you, very don't, rare. you don't see them uh, every day, uh, for sure. I saw one guy on eBay, and, and he must have been sniffing glue. He wanted 20 grand for one that was restored, but he had people who were sending him inquiries because it is a really rare truck now. And it's definitely worthwhile just to see them and how weird they are and unique. So yeah, there was a, you're absolutely right. There was a rotary truck out there and there hasn't been one since. Are you guys gonna film Rusty Boy being crushed at the junkyard anytime <laughs> soon? No, okay, next no. question. Next no. question. Uh, yeah, Tommy's right here. You, yeah, wow. Uh, no, actually, Rusty Boy is going to race Big Green and Dutch Zilla Overkill, so it's going to be a three-way race. It's going to be a three-way You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to buy like a beat-up old Toyota truck and compete with these guys because I know it would win. I, it would. It would just beat them all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm still shopping for my lot on Neva. <laughs> Next. Now, here's a question we've been getting a lot of, and okay. I've kind of been saving it toward the end. What about the Ranger? The Ranger, that's obviously in the same vein as the Chevy S10. Yep, it is. Um, with the Ranger, I only had, believe it or not, uh, my parents had one as a third truck and it was the final generation in the United States. And my brother had the very first generation Ranger, which had a four-speed manual transmission with a four-cylinder engine. And so from that all the way up to a four-liter V6, I've had sort of the spectrum. The thing about the Ranger, it's a great truck. There are a couple issues with it that I would say tend to be on the negative side. They had a smaller V6. It was, I think, a 2.8 liter or something like that. And it wasn't the most reliable engine. The four liter was much better and a lot more expensive. Uh, in terms of off-road, they did have a couple kind of sort of off-road versions. Yeah. They had the splash version. They had a step side. They had a whole bunch of things. But compared to some of these other trucks, the Ranger commands actually quite a bit of money to get a slightly newer one that's you know looking good. And in good shape. In good shape. Yeah. And they never built a Ford Ranger, as far as I can recollect, that ever competed with the Chevy S10 ZR2. And also, there was never a Ranger crew cab. 
there was a S10 crew cab in certain years. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's also part of this list. I mean, the Ranger sh should be among. Ab absolutely, and the thing, once again, you can get so many different versions of it. There's there were just a ton. Uh, someone said it's a three liter V6. Is it the three liter? Okay, uh, we'll do one last question here. Didn't they do a Harley Davidson F150? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, this is part of, the part of the reason why I chose the 10th um, generation F-150 is because um, they had a lot of different versions. Not all of them you can buy for under five grand, <laughs> but they also had the Lightning th th that in that generation, yeah. which is a little bit more expensive, which was a high performance truck, obviously. They also had um, Eddie Bauer yeah. edition. Um, Harley Davidson was really kind of cool and it's kind of rare still. Yeah, it is, and I've, I've seen them going for well over ten grand for one that had a lot of miles on it. Uh, the thing about the Harley Davidson version, completely unique interior, all of that dedicated to Harley Davidson with a lot of uh, labeling all throughout, and then the exterior usually had some unique stripes and, and a paint job and unique wheels. And yeah, they're, they're, I wouldn't say they're necessarily collectible yet, but they're definitely things that get a lot of people's interest, especially those people who like Harleys. And Harley Davidson, I think the following generation, the 11th, also had a version of it. And they also did the Super Duty in the Harley Davidson. That's right. And I really like the black and orange. That theme of, was really, really cool. Yep. Any, any more questions before we move on to the t shirt? Um, Bronco. Uh, well, there are a couple of different well, generations of Bronco. We yes. had one. Uh, the final generation of Bronco, I like to call it the OJ Bronco for right. obvious reasons. Sure. Um, those things are a dime a dozen. I am not a big fan of the twin I beam front suspension that was on some of them uh, at all. The earlier ones had a much more conventional setup like the one we had. The Pers original. Yeah, yeah the, the original. original Bronco. I used to own a GMC Jimmy, and same thing as the Blazer, and that one for me was a much easier vehicle to work with and work on, had the same Saginaw 4 speed that this truck has, and frankly speaking, I thought it was a better vehicle, which is why I bought it. Yeah, and why don't we do, uh, give away the shirt? Um, so. Uh, we appreciate your support, and one way you can support us is on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash tflcar. Yep. You can donate a little bit of money, 2 or 5 or $10 to us, and it, we want to give back, obviously, as much as possible. So we pick a name at random and give away this TFL truck and car shirt, and we usually sign the sleeves. So uh, this one was signed by... Our CEO, Roman, Roman yeah. Micah. Yeah. So and uh, so we put our names on, on the shirt as well. So uh, I picked a name at random today, and AJ Mayer um, was the was the guy. So I really appreciate your support, and I'll send you an email. And if you would like a shirt, we'll send it to you. And if you don't want a shirt, we'll send it to somebody else. I'll I'll give it to you. Oh. <laughs> I could always use one that's been signed by Roman. Gosh. <laughs> hey, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Once again, if we didn't answer your question, remember, this will turn into a regular video in a little bit. And go ahead and put your question in there, and hopefully we'll be able to see it and answer it. Yep. Thanks a lot for joining. Adios.